You know that feeling, that perfect feeling of getting lost in the reality of a great fucking game? That feeling of firing up something new and awakening into a simulated sandbox of endless possibilities, of stories awaiting your attention, your obsession, your emotional connection? That feeling of forging a path through the frontiers of a great new unknown, be it the altered earth or an entirely alien expanse. That feeling of discovering ancient landmarks, strange cultures, new people and places and secrets, hidden treasures, forgotten ruins, little details so intricate and specific it feels like you and only you will ever know of them. It's that overwhelming sensation of stepping into a world beyond your own imagination and being clumsy, unsure, maybe afraid and totally uninitiated against the scope of the systems that surround you and how, in time, you come to master the mechanics, synchronise with those systems until eventually it is you that overwhelms the world as you strive beyond mere assimilation. It's the allure of moving through impossible infrastructure, exotic architecture and unorthodox engineering. It's the enchantment of bearing first-hand witness to an expertly realised environment, perhaps a paradise, ethereal and pure, or some godforsaken hellscape, bleak and unforgiving, but where every city, every snowy mountain, every desert and forest, every tree and cloud and river and rock is conceived of and constructed and situated, digitally so, with a passion and precision and technical proficiency that makes your journey through that realm the only thing that matters, that makes your absorption, your immersion into that world as you're sunk back into your sofa in the black of night, the only thing you believe in. It's just you, your avatar, and the dream you're living in. That's a perfect feeling, you know, and I think James Cameron's Avatar isn't just a movie about that feeling, it is that feeling recreated in filmic form. Yeah, Avatar might not be a video game movie, but it's the only one that gets this. And so, hi, my name is Bailey, and this is why I love The year is 2009. Someone tells you that no one cares about this upcoming new movie called Avatar, directed by the man who made The Terminator, Aliens, Judgment Day and Titanic. The year is 2010 and someone tells you that no one cares about Avatar, which has just made $2.7 billion and been nominated for more than 200 industry awards. The year is 2022, and there is not just one, but four Avatar sequels on the way. Still, someone tells you that... Now, this isn't the goal or focus of this video whatsoever, but it's a take so delightfully insane that it becomes the only spot it makes sense to start this thing. Because there's been a pretty intense push, kinda since day one, to reduce and diminish and demean the existence of what I think is one of, if not the, quintessential blockbuster movie experiences of the last 15 years or so. A quiet crusade structured around deeply strange qualifiers, such as the classic, uh, no one remembers the main character's name. Which... Uh, say it with me now, Jake. Jake Sully. There we go, gang! We can tick that one off the list. But the fact there is a list at all is pretty fucking weird. What else have we got on there? 
It's just Dances with Wolves with Blue Aliens. It's Fern Gully. It's Pocahontas. Have you ever heard someone quote Avatar? Its allegory is too obvious. There's no, uh, memes or sexy fan fiction? 3D is stupid. It's all just pretty visual effects. Uh, see, that last one really gets to me, man. Because just... No. Avatar isn't just pretty effects, they're utterly perfect effects, game-changing effects, effects designed and delivered with such a passion and precision and technical proficiency with the purpose of offering us a very specific experience, of offering all of us an experience, one that has just as much value now, if not more, than it did 13 years ago. People always try to knock Avatar for being a movie for everyone, for being too general, too universal. But baby, 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 that is a beautiful thing. Jim Cameron got this right where we've watched more and more blockbusters fail over the last decade plus. Achieving universal appeal isn't through tone, injecting irreverent wisecracks every minute or so to achieve a base level of enjoyability and comfort, nor is it about relentless action or nostalgia. No. All it takes is staying simple and appealing to big concepts that every human being on Earth explores within themselves. Concepts like, is there a better way to be? Because when you see the Na'vi, when you see Neytiri just tearing through those treetops with an elegance and grace you only wish you had, are you really going to tell me that's not a world you want to be part of? That's why I've just never really bought into the whole no one remembers the main character's name thing, because sure, you might find Jake Sully hard to remember years later, but no one forgets Pandora, and that's the entire point of the movie. And Jim knew we doubt it. He knew Avatar was a tough sell. He knew we're all 21st century pessimists of habit, grand cynics ready to call bullshit on any dream too big, any vision too impossible, too brave and strange and new. Any film that doesn't wink and nod and flaunt its insecurity. Jim knew all that and knew that the only way to shut down a skeptic is to tell them they're right while showing them otherwise. You are not in Kansas anymore. Out there beyond that fence, every living thing that crawls, flies or squats in the mud wants to kill you and eat your eyes for jujubes. Right from the jump, we're told to distrust this new world, to fight its allure and remain on guard. The freedom of flying over the trees is just a dream, and this is the reality. Man-made industry, cold and recognisable. The tech is familiar, the operation standard practice. It's the kind of sci-fi we've come to expect, and so it's comfortable. Great! Our perspective matches that of Jake, our avatar. Clumsy, unsure, and totally uninitiated against the scope of the systems that surround him, but he's curious and along for the ride. He might be a cynic too, but he's not beholden to his way of seeing things, and he's willing to learn, to try things out, to explore, to be overwhelmed by the experience of something sensational, and to just have fun with it. This is great. His first foray into the new world, our first expedition into the heart of Pandora, is fueled by that curiosity, that cautious wonder held a weapon's length away. And that curiosity gets him in trouble. Now, alone in the jungle at night, that cynicism seeps back in. It's scary out there in the dark. Things howl and go bump. You go human and you resist and you need to fight for survival. I am man and I beat my surroundings into submission. But stopped, saved from all that by a being that knows better, you have a moment to let go, to breathe, to see. And that moment is the magic in all its stunning complexity that makes the skeptic inside us all shut down.
The path of resistance makes us blind to the wonders of the world around us, and by letting go, we let that wonder in, just as Jake does. It's moments like this that justify Jim's blank canvas basics approach. The narrative, the structure, the human characters, they're all reliable archetypes, tried and tested over centuries of storytelling to get the job done. Because when the fundamentals are rock solid, the spectacle can soar. Moments like this are made magical because the foundations around them are so sure. We might know this story, we might have seen it somewhere before, but we've never seen Pandora, and that is the whole reason we're here. Jim knew we'd get behind this framework, and once he had that, the imagination between the lines becomes infinite. And some might still say, plenty have said, Huh, the thing they're mining is literally called unobtainium. The imagination isn't that infinite. And you're right on the money. It's not. But it's the fundamental embodiment of where Jim's storytelling priorities lie. And here's a hint. It's in the right fucking place. Yeah, unobtainium sounds silly, but it explains exactly what it's supposed to, doesn't it? It's an impossibly rare rock, so valuable it finances this whole party, and everyone understands that from the name alone. Easy! More time to spend soaring through the sky on the back of a banshee. As far as I'm concerned, a smart rider knows what matters to the experience, and they know what should matter to you. The wealth of this world isn't in the ground, it's all around us. If we're to be told later on that this overpriced ore holds no true value scaled against the majesty of the Pandoran wilderness, then yeah, make the rock seem stupid with a stupid human name so we abandon it at the switch and then get back to letting your imagination run wild beyond the earthly industry of Hell's Gate. Get out there and imagine insanely enormous trees, imagine lemurs with four arms and horses with six legs, imagine spiral shrubs that sink into the ground and lambent jellyfish lanterns floating through the canopy, imagine unusual animals and exotic environments, ancient landmarks, strange cultures, new people and places and secrets, because that is the experience we arrived here for, scepticism be damned and oh shit, helicopter! To lizard. Get out there and imagine a new world overflowing with the impossible, the alien, the uncharted unknown, and then sell us that reality without seams for cynicism. Dream up something spiritual and honest and, well, strangely familiar, and then put in the work to make us believe it's all true. Now, everyone knows Avatar is a technical achievement. No one walked out of this saying the effects were, hmm, okay. Nah, that's the one element everyone was impressed by. But here's the thing, y'all aren't impressed enough for my liking because a decade on, Avatar remains borderline unchallenged. I wanted to be so far out in front that nobody would ever catch us. And they haven't. There's maybe a handful of digital realities that have come for the title since. Gravity, June, 2049, and this is the one zone where Star Wars doesn't ever miss. The last two Apes movies maxed out the motion capture, but there hasn't been another project that goes all digital in every element top to bottom like Avatar does for as long as Avatar does in the scope Avatar does and save my fave with the intent Avatar has to immerse you completely. Immersion is the key, which I guess makes 3D the lock? Yeah, big analogy guy over here. Big 3D guy too, actually. That's not a joke. 3D in the right hands, in the hands of James Cameron and Fusion Camera System co-pioneer Vince Pace is the ultimate tool for bringing us into a world entirely. Done right, done like Avatar, it removes the final cinematic scene separation between you and the screen. 
Apex Level 3D neutralizes the perceivable periphery, letting the image spill beyond the bounds of that four-sided enclosure until it commands your entire field of view. That isn't really what happens, obviously, but that's what real deal 3D feels like. It hones your focus and takes you closer to the image, further into that world than a conventional 2D image ever could. That's why I say, if it ain't in 3D, it ain't Avatar. This footage on screen right now, not Avatar. It's half of what Avatar is supposed to be at best. It ain't Jim's intended Avatar experience, the full Avatar experience, unless you're seeing Zoe Saldana give the performance of a fucking lifetime 30 feet tall in three dimensions. Just like you not not be your a face 30 feet tall in three dimensions feels like a face right in front of you. That's a conversation I'm a part of, a journey I'm moving through. This world might be entirely manufactured, completely synthetic, but the way it's captured is so organic and alive. It's a camera that's fully tactile, that feels like it's on the shoulder of a real operator because it was. This whole thing doesn't work if the world is digital and the camera is digital too. That's too much artifice with zero grounding. The scene might have been created in a space without limits, but Jim won't ever run a shot that doesn't feel like documentary, complete with all those little handheld bumps and shakes, that lack of even-footed stability, as if the terrain and wind and water is affecting the movement of a real camera in a real location. It's a camera that's always trying to keep up, to capture the wonder, to investigate something interesting. Jim guides our eyes to the right detail at the right time, because Avatar lives or dies by those details, whether it's the singular specks of soil between Jake's turquoise toes or the bioluminescence beneath Neytiri's nighttime skin. And look at that skin, that beautiful, meticulous blue skin. I don't want to get weird about it, but eh, screw it, too late. I could just stare at those skin textures forever. How did they do it, man? How? The patterns, lines, creases and pores, that ever so mild translucency on the upper layers that you notice only in the light of an evening fire, the glisten of sweat, those perfect imperfections that make skin real, that make hair real, teeth, Eyes. This was 13 freaking years ago, and you tell me today that the Na'vi aren't real, that this story, this world, isn't real. Look at how the light leaks through the leaves, how water runs over weathered rock, and how sediment swirls beneath the surface. Watch as the forest floor, carpeted with moss and mud and lichen, illuminates underfoot. How branches bend and bounce and break when brushed past. How bark is ripped apart in splinters at the impact of gunfire. See the insects in the air, the dust too, the clouds and smoke and flame scattered in the wind, in the rain. This is thousands upon thousands of handcrafted assets designed by nearly a thousand artists brought to life by animation after animation affected by simulation after simulation. Like, we are talking hours to render just a single one of its some 230,000 frames. Which is insane! It's insane! And you might ask, is all of that really necessary? Like, Jimmy baby, I'm not paying attention to bloody uh, plant veins or fucking dirt. And true, you probably aren't noticing a good 95% of these things unless you're actively looking for them. But here's the thing, here's the thing that separates great visual effects from real visual effects. We subconsciously, instinctively, know when an image is incomplete. We can feel something missing, something holding a scene back from feeling real. You might not notice how the grass moves beneath a rotor blade, or how a rope strains under tension, or how a shadow dances in firelight, but on the off chance you do, if it ain't there, 
boom, you're out of it and you're sitting in a theater watching a movie and that is not what this is about. For the immersion to be seamless, it needs to be flawless. Jim knew it needed to be flawless and he took Avatar as close to that as the year 2009 allowed him to. 13 years on, just as it was back then, it's overwhelming. There's more detail, more life, because detail is life to every single frame than you could possibly take in at once. I've taken it all in like, what, 15, 16 times since day one, and I still don't feel like I've even scratched the surface. It's overwhelming, the scope of it, the complexity of it. In full flight, long before we reach the climactic battle for the soul of the forest, a battle I'm well and truly invested in, all that cynicism we came to this planet with should have dissipated into that limitless green. All that detail, all that painstaking work to achieve absolute realism starts to coalesce into an experience of absolute fluidity. One where I'm no longer processing the impossible, because the impossible just is. And I'm there. Right there. It's just me, the Avatar, and the world of Pandora. And I believe. That right there, that feeling of total immersion, of absolute belief, that is the perfect feeling I'm talking about. That's the feeling I get from playing a great fucking game, and it's the feeling Avatar embodies more perfectly than I think any other movie ever has. That feeling of being there, really being there, being part of a fight for something where you truly care about the outcome in a reality that doesn't even exist, where time evaporates entirely until you've seen that journey through. That is the closest you could possibly get to that perfect feeling of playing a game without a controller in your hands. That feeling of steering an avatar capable of things you could never do through a world you'll never know. A digital world in which every last leaf and stone and ember, every ray of sunshine and gust of wind, every last pixel was handcrafted for your absolute investment. Next time you watch Avatar, and there will be a next time, I want you to think about that. Really think about that. I think we can all appreciate a technical achievement to some degree. I hope we can. But when you tune in to all the individual components, all the deconstructed mechanisms at work here, it is so much ascendant artistry and ingenuity and mathematical problem solving, it's impossible to process all at once. It's perfection on a scale I will never fully comprehend. That's the feeling I get while I'm playing something like this, or this, or this, just absolutely losing my goddamn mind. The vision and talent and coordination and manpower required to make even one frame of this happen is so beyond anything I'm capable of understanding. And to find joy in that, to revel in the sheer magnitude of that kind of pure creation, the passion in that human craftsmanship, I'd say that is one of the most magical gifts of the modern era. I honestly, genuinely believe that perfect feeling is the critical factor in Avatar's runaway success, especially with generations older than mine. It supplies that feeling that everyone under 25 in 2009 had grown up on with games, but our parents and grandparents had dismissed completely. Avatar inadvertently became a Trojan horse for offering grandma and grandpa a true open world experience in all its overwhelming glory. And I think that's fucking incredible. 
Avatar is fucking incredible. Everyone ate Avatar up because the experience Avatar offers is one we all so desperately want to have. We want to enter a world beyond our imagination. We want to forge a path through the frontiers of a great new unknown. We want to discover ancient landmarks, strange cultures, new people and places and secrets. We want to awaken into a simulated sandbox of endless possibilities of Stories awaiting our attention, our obsession, our emotional connection. Because when we enter a cinema and those lights go down, the only thing we truly yearn for is to believe in the dream unfolding in front of us. To forget about the outside world as a new reality takes over. The only reality that matters anymore. One where it's nothing but you your avatar, and the dream you're living in. Don't wake up. Hey, sorry this was so late. I have been sick, very sick, and it affected me being able to record almost half of it but it's here and it's done and it's gonna be my last video of 2022 and I feel like we're getting the channel back on track and Avatar The Way of Water is amazing. Obviously, I'm obsessed with it and you should be too. If you wanna tune into more videos this good next year, prove it. Subscribe to me right now, I know you want to. I'd love to know what you thought of this video too. I'm sure at least a few of you are gonna have some thoughts and I welcome them. Thank you all for being here through this year, especially my champion patrons whose names are up on screen right now. You'll have a safe, loving, lovely end to 2022, and I will see you soon with Empathy First, always.